The second part of Chapter 14 focuses on online, social media, and mobile marketing. So to get started, we're going to define what online marketing is. Online marketing refers to marketing via the internet. Um, and we're going to use outlets such as company websites, branded websites, search engines, blogs, social media, mobile, and more. So what we're going to do is walk through each of these digital and social tactics, starting with a website. A marketing website is an online portal that engages customers to move them closer to a direct purchase or other marketing outcome. A marketing website is a website owned by the company or organization that has a product or service to sell. And when a company sets up a website, they're doing so for four reasons. One, to create awareness. For small companies with limited budgets, a website is the best way to create awareness. Um, while the internet isn't the most effective medium so compared to things like TV and magazine, it still is one of the best ways to create awareness. Another reason companies need websites is to disseminate information. Studies show that 75% of people turn to the internet first when they're looking for information, um, either about a product, a service, an event, um, or a uh, nonprofit charitable organization. And so having a website can provide in-depth information about products and services. So today, a website is essentially necessary. Think about this for a second. If you can't find a marketing website, aren't you less likely to buy from the company who's selling that product? So a third reason companies have websites is to stimulate trial among consumers. Websites are a great place to combine with social um, other tactics, including sales promotions. Uh, so you can host coupons, promotions, and sweepstakes on your website to help stimulate trial. And then finally, websites are used to sell to their customers. Um, E-commerce sales are expected to reach over $327 billion this year. And even though web sales still account for less than 8% of all sales, it is a great way to sell and connect with customers. In addition to a website, a lot of companies participate in online advertising. Online advertising comes in two forms, um, but it is essentially advertising that appears while consumers are browsing the internet. Um, and the first form of online advertising is an online display ad. An online display ad can appear anywhere on an internet user screen, and the content is often related to the information being viewed on that web page. So today we see display ads that include animation, video, sound, and interactivity to try to capture the customer's attention. You guys have probably heard online display ads called banner ads, and so that's the other name for those. Um, and you can imagine, being a consumer, you do tend to kind of scroll past without reading. So the more interactive and exciting you can make those ads, the more likely the customer is to see them. Another form of online advertising is search-related ads. And search-related ads are text-based ads that appear either atop or alongside the search engine results. So on websites such as Google, Yahoo, and Bing. Um, and search advertisers, the way this works is that advertisers want to be on the first page of Google. Study shows that consumers do not go past the first page of Google when they're looking for information. And so search advertisers can buy, they can purchase keywords from a search site to guarantee that their web link will be displayed when a consumer searches for those keywords. So online advertising is comprised of both display ads and search ads. Let's move on to social media marketing. Social media marketing allows for the creation and exchange of user-generated content. So social media differs from traditional online advertising uh, because it does allow for consumers to be a part of the promotional activity. And consumers can be most active on social networking sites. Um, so these are sites uh, where people gather to socialize, share messages, opinions, photos, videos, and any other content. Um, and sometimes you know these people in real life, and sometimes you're just connected via that social platform. So I want to talk about for a second 
why marketers use social media. There are a few specific goals that marketers have in mind when they are including social media in their plan. The first is to drive traffic back to their marketing website. Um, social networking sites and social media platforms are a great way to provide small amounts of information or to have introductory conversations with your consumers. But ultimately, you want to send them back to your main website to gather more information and hopefully purchase a product. Marketers use social media to communicate with their customers. It's a great way, again, to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Marketers also use social media to gain brand exposure. There are tons of people, millions of people on social media. And so it's a great way for marketers to connect with that large amount of people. And then finally, social media marketing can help build SEO. Um, and we're not going into depth on SEO, but SEO is those organic Google results. So social media marketing can help your company appear on the first page of Google. So what can a marketer do on a social media site? Um, the first thing marketers can do is they can create organic social media pages and have consumers follow them. And that's a great way to provide information to your current customers or current followers. But what about the rest of the people on social media? What marketers can do is they can pay to place advertisements in front of a very targeted group of consumers. So social media sites like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, they all collect user information. Think about that. You fill out profiles and voluntarily give all of these organizations your information. And so they turn around and collect that information and sell it to advertisers in order to help advertisers reach the people who would be most likely to buy their product, right? So they're looking for people who are going to be interested in the product and social media can target an ad to those people. So social media is very targeted and personal. It's immediate. It's cost effective. It's excellent at engaging with your customers and conversing with your customers as well. The last thing we're going to talk about is mobile marketing. Mobile marketing is marketing messages and promotions that are delivered to on the go consumers through mobile phones. Over 40% of American households no longer have a landline, so they only use their mobile phones. And almost 65% of people in the United States today own a smartphone. And the average smartphone has 26 apps installed. So those three statistics should prove to you that mobile marketing is quite effective. And there are three different tactics that fall into this mobile marketing category. The first is what we call mobile optimization. Um, in terms of marketing, it is critical that businesses make their website mobile friendly. You'll often find that when you visit a website on your phone, you're directed to a mobile site that highlights specific features. It's a lot easier to read and easier to use on a smaller screen. The second thing that a company can do in terms of mobile marketing is actually create a branded application. And a lot of businesses do this. Um, some examples are Starbucks, Amazon, Walmart, eBay, um, and a lot of retailers have their own app. And these apps are going to have special features available to the customers who download them. And then the last way to use mobile marketing in your marketing plan is text message marketing. Um, today, consumers can sign up to receive text with information and deals from their favorite brands. And so you can opt in or opt out of these um, depending on how many messages you wish, wish to receive. And so with that, we've now covered all of the different social media marketing tactics that companies use in their plans to better communicate with customers. Before we sign off, I want you to think about your favorite product or company. And I want you to consider all of the promotional tactics that we've looked at in chapters 12, 13, and 14. And using your favorite product or company, think about all the promotional tactics that they use to communicate with their customers. Are there any tactics they are not using that you think they should be? And are also think about if there are any tactics that they're currently using 
that might not align with their target market or overall company goals. And when we get together in class next week, we'll talk about that to kick off our session.